One of the most important aspects of creating audio visual is protecting the time you've put into that project by making a backup in zip. Now if you've not already done so, you should view this video. It could save you hours of lost time and it takes only 10 seconds to create a backup in zip. So let me take you through a scenario where the backup in zip wasn't done. I want to go back approximately 10 years to reopen a project I made called Hot in the City. I just want to make some changes to the end credits because they're out of date. So here I'm looking in Windows Explorer at a folder I've called Hot in the City. Now back at the end of 2011-2012, I would have created something like four of these folders for any slideshow I made. And as you can see, I used to keep sound in one. So let's just take a peek to make sure from over 10 years ago, they're still there. I seem to have plenty of sound. If I look in my images for the show, well, they are certainly the images I use, so that's good news. If I look into the layered files, I've even got a few of those. These are images that I may have worked on in Photoshop, but of course we cannot display PSD files, so I would have kept them just in case I wanted to make a change. But probably the most important is the folder that contains project and exe files. Now here, I seem to have loads of project files. So what we've got to do first here is to discover which one of these is the latest. Let's take a look at these files in a different way by going to view and choosing details because now we can see the date the file was created. If I click the date here, it should bring the latest to the top. So we can see that hot in the city.pte was created on the 9th of the 12th, 2012. A quick scan down to make sure nothing was made later than that. So really all I need to do is to open up PTE AV Studio and locate that file. But in fact, I can do it from here. I can double click. And the good news is I know all of the files are there. Except something's gone badly wrong. Now, despite me having all of those project files, none of them are going to give me a better result than this. And I can tell you that PTE cannot find any of the images in this sequence. And there's a lot of them. And it can't find the sound files either. So it appears I've got a big problem here. But perhaps not. Before we fix this, let me just explain what's gone wrong. It's simply that since I made this, I now have a new computer, all the drive letters of all the drives and the places I work from have changed. PTE is just looking for a drive letter that now doesn't exist. What we've got to do is to tell it for all of those images and all of those sound files where they are. But it's easier than it looks. Because if I tell PTE AV Studio where one of these files is located, it's going to find the rest as well. Now I'm going to pick this one because it's a nice, easy name to look for. Down to find selected files, I need to navigate to where these files are located. Now bear with me because I'm working on a video here, so I've got it tucked away in my content. There it is, hot in the city. So I know that all of my images should be in the images for show. And when I open this up, I'm looking for one called PNG, frame. There it is. If I select that and click open, you can see that PTE has found all the remaining images where it looks like it has. We've got green ticks, which is good news. So let's do the same for the sound. Now I can't quite read this and I can't get to the other end of it, but this one I can see, monorail eight, leave indoors, and I think that says closed. So let me tick that, find selected files, hot in the city, sound files, 
Now I've got to find it. There it is, I can see it. Monorail, monorail eight. Leave indoors, close. Open that. And we've got ticks there too. Okay, fingers and toes crossed. We're back in business. All I've got to do now is to save a new project file and you can see I've given mine a different name, 2022 I've put on the end of it so I can always tell this is the latest one. If we tried to overwrite this file, you'll get a warning message that says something like, this presentation was made in an earlier version of PTE and therefore if we overwrite the file it cannot be reopened in that old version. So it's always a good practice to just change the name and then we're all set. And if I just quickly take you to the end of my slideshow we can see everything's there. I do get access to this particular slide because this one is showing a domain name that doesn't exist. It's now dot photo. But if I go to my timeline, there you can see I've got all of the files in place, even the sound effects at the start, and everything has been retained, all of the synchronization ready to make either an executable file for PC or Mac, or a brand new MP4.